Alrighty guys, what is up and welcome back to the Roddy channel. My name's Colin Bracken and for today's video I have Junior here joining us to share some puppy tips for you guys that we as Rottweiler owners have learned. In this video today we're going to be talking about specifically Rottweilers but I think these tips can be applied to pretty much any breed. Alrighty, so tip number one that I have for you guys today is going to be get ready to lose some sleep. When these guys leave their litter and their moms, they're definitely gonna be upset, they're gonna have some sort of puppy blues, and they're gonna be depressed. It's gonna be a lot of whining, a lot of howling, a lot of adjusting to the house. It's gonna last for a few days. Sometimes you're gonna get lucky, it'll only be one or two days. Some people may have none, some people may have a couple weeks. It's gonna be normal, get used to it, it's gonna happen. Alrighty, tip number two that I have for you guys is please, please understand that this puppy is not just a cute little puppy. This is a life commitment and this is a dog that you are bringing home and you need to stick by its side through everything and you need to take responsibility for this dog. So, things that uh, people kind of forget about is as puppies, they need a lot of attention. They need a lot of sleep, they need to eat regularly, they need to get a lot of exercise, but they also need to be socialized early and often. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit later in the video and we'll go into more depth about that, but uh, you really, really need to make it very important in a Rottweiler puppy to socialize them with kids, other people, other dogs. They need to get out, they need to experience things, they need to gain that confidence that Rottweilers are known for. Instead of being scared of stuff, if they never leave the house, they're never gonna know what to do when they see something that they've never seen and they go into their instinct mode, which is to protect, and they don't understand what they're up against. So then they show off and that's when things get really bad. So that's what I have for tip number two. Let's hop into tip number three, which is knowing the cost of owning one. So first off, Rottweilers are an expensive breed because there's not as many breeders and they're not as common as bred as other dogs. Uh, you'll find them in less shelters, uh, usually when something happens with a Rottweiler, which is unfortunate, but they usually get put down if there's a serious enough incident. So it's, it's more rare to see them in shelters, but if you do, be sure to snag one up and rescue them because we, we love a good rescue story. But uh, know, the, know the financial side of owning a Rottweiler. You're gonna have to buy more durable toys, toys more often, you're gonna have to feed them. These guys eat a lot of food. Please understand that it's no cheap thing to feed a Rottweiler. And if you're buying cheap food, you're not doing yourself or your dog any favors. Uh, you're gonna be cleaning up a lot more. You're gonna be prone to more vet visits because you're cheapening out on your dog food. Uh, that's why we feed a good solid dog food and then we feed a raw food diet at night so they get a well-rounded and balanced diet. Uh, know that you need to get bedding for them, you need to get a kennel for them, um, you need to get harnesses, you need to get collars, you need to get leashes, you need to uh, pay for um, yearly checkups at the vet, you need to pay for any type of medication, antibiotics that they might need, you gotta pay for shots in the future, rabies vaccinations. Um, there's a lot of bills that are associated so be sure to budget enough money of owning a Rottweiler because anything could happen anytime there could be an accident, anytime that there could be, anything can come up and you want to make sure that financially you're ready to take care of a family member. Alrighty, so with making sure that you are financially available to owning a puppy, now we're going to talk about the time that it takes to own a puppy. So yes, you can have a job and own a puppy. like. Everybody's got to have a job, right? Uh, puppies are not just for stay-at-home people. Um, but you want to make sure that your time away is very limited. Make sure that if you're by yourself working 8 in the morning till 6 at night, a Rottweiler puppy by itself may not be the best thing for you. Where we have four dogs, it's a little bit easier for us to leave on a longer day because the puppies aren't going to get lonely. These guys are people dogs, so be sure and remember that they do love being around you, but they're also pack dogs too, and they love being in a group and being a part of a pack. So this guy will not get near as lonely because he has the other dog. So where I'm working from, say, 8 in the morning till 4 or 5 in the afternoon, sometimes Sam's home a little earlier and she can pull him out and let him out. Uh, he is kenneled during the day because at this size, they need supervision all the time if they're going to be out of the kennel. These guys are super, super cute, but when they get into their little energetic spats, they're gonna bite everything, they're gonna chew everything, they're experiencing everything is new to them. 
So imagine like you grabbing a cord and pulling it and realizing that it rips or breaking a DVD tape or a CD or anything, drawing on a wall. Like that's how these guys learn. So you have to take care of them and you have to be sure to make sure and supervise them as often as you can, unless they're in a kennel, sleeping, taking a nap, um, then you don't really have to worry about them. They'll let you know when they're up and ready to play. Alrighty guys, for the next tip, we're gonna be talking about planning for time outside. These guys need to get out, they need to experience life, they need to see other animals, they need to chase some squirrels, they need to chase some chickens and realize, hey, it's not okay when you do that. So that way, anytime you go out in public, your dog is not acting all crazy because they've never seen all this stuff that's exciting them and, and really just changing them and who they are as a dog because they're not really used to it yet. So you need to make sure to pl spend plenty of time outside as well as the exercise that these guys need. These guys need to run, they need to work, they need to get stuff done. These guys will definitely be destructive if you don't get them exercised. Huh, huh, you guys are a little crazy sometimes if you get cooped up in the house all day. These guys need to get exercised and you're also gonna be doing yourself a benefit for their, their health. So for the next tip that I have for you guys, what a perfect example but we're gonna be talking about how dogs and puppies need attention. So even when puppies grow up, they don't really grow up. They still become lap dogs. They still want your attention. They're still gonna sit on you. They're still gonna lay on you. They're gonna jump on you. They're gonna want pets from you when you get home. And they're gonna want a pet from you all the time. Like, look at this, I'm not making this up. Kita's probably getting burnt over here by the fire and she doesn't even care. Now, now Fluffy's climbing on me. This is a perfect example of what I'm talking about but these guys need attention. So if you're not ready to put stuff down or even have a puppy sit on your lap while you're working or have a puppy get in your face while you're making a YouTube video, so don't forget to hit that like button. I mean, wait, what? Fluff, now you got me talking all crazy. Hi, I love you too, I love you too. We'll have some family time after the YouTube video. Well, kinda, we're having family time right now. And this is what we're doing now. So. Make time, your puppies need attention, they need love, and if you don't, you're gonna regret it because then they're not gonna be loyal to you. Alrighty, so for tip number six, just remember that even though these guys don't really grow up, this 10 pound puppy that you bring home at eight weeks is gonna turn into 125 pound Fluffy after just a year or two of being alive. So. The typical Rottweiler, uh, male Rottweiler, I should say, the females are about 1.7 pounds to two pounds, but these guys are gonna gain about two pounds every week for the first year of their life. So just think about that for a second and understand that this 10 pound guy next week when you guys see him on the channel is gonna be two or three pounds heavier. And then the week after that, he's gonna be four pounds heavier than he is right now or six pounds heavier. Um, it really can vary depending on the puppy, uh, but uh, just remember that puppies don't stay puppies, which is also a blessing when these guys are tearing up shoes, they're tearing up cords. Uh, just, It's a blessing that they don't stay puppies, but wouldn't it be awesome if they stayed this cute forever? They do, they just, they just get bigger and cute. They're just not small cute. Like it's easier to put this guy on my lap than it is for Kenai. Like I could hold three of these guys. I don't know if I could hold all three dogs on my lap. You wanna hop up here, Kenai? You wanna come hang out? Alrighty, the next tip that I have for you guys, now this is one of the most important tips that I have, but don't forget to prioritize taking pictures and taking videos because just like we talked about in the last tip, these guys don't stay puppies forever. And you're gonna want memories and you're gonna wanna see the time that they were one month to two month to three month to four month to five month and you're really just wanna, gonna, gonna wanna be able to have a whole compilation of videos of your puppy growing up because as we know, these guys don't have the longest lifespan and one day we're gonna look back and be glad that we took all those pictures and videos anyway. Alrighty guys, the next tip that I have is Puppies, and especially big dogs, love to get dirty, so be ready to clean. We have to sweep all the time in the house. We've gotta clean all the time. They bring in dust, they bring in mud, they ruin the bed sheets, they ruin our clothes, they jump on us, they get mud on us. Kenai right now is holding his paw on me and his paws are wet because he's been out in the yard and the sprinklers were on, but uh, 
these guys get dirty and you're gonna kind of just have to live with that and accept it and be ready to clean uh, there's nothing really worse than a dog owner who doesn't take care of like their dog hair or clean the house and they just say well my dogs trash my house it's like they can't really clean up after themselves like Keen I thinks he can Keen I thinks he can but, I mean, it, again, it, it comes down to that you're responsible for the dog and you're responsible for cleaning up their mess. So don't blame your dog for having a dirty house. But with that being said, also expect that, like, that's why we don't have the nicest couches. Like, if we buy brand new couches, the dogs are going to jump on them with mud on them and they're going to just not really hold up very well, I guess. Uh, and not only that, but we can get new couches if the dogs mess them up or we can have one outside or, like, I mean, really just expect to not have the nicest things because your dogs are gonna mess them up. Kinda. So with that being said, let's talk about puppy proofing hazards. So things like cords plugged into the walls, things like uh, hoses that you don't want to be chewed through, like a vacuum hose or like anything like that. Things that you don't want the dogs to be chewing on, get them off the ground. Don't leave your stuff on the ground and then let the dog chew on it and then you get mad at the dog because he chewed on your stuff. So just the other day I kept telling him, Junior, I'm like, stop chewing on him, stop chewing on my shoes, stop chewing on my shoes. And Sam's like, why don't you pick them up? And I'm like, oh, great idea. Like, I totally spaced that. So picked my shoes up, guess what? The puppy's not chewing on my shoes anymore. So be sure to puppy proof from hazards so that you're setting your dog up for success and setting yourself up for success in training the dog in what's wrong and right. Alrighty guys, so make sure that meal prep is done properly and make sure that you guys are taking care of your pets. Don't give them the cheapest dog food that you can find because it saves you a buck. It's gonna cost you in the end when you have vet bills because they're not the healthiest that they could have been. It's gonna really upset you when your dog is short a year or two on life because you didn't feed him a proper diet. So please take the time to meal prep. Consider a raw food diet. If you're not gonna consider a raw food diet, consider a very, very top of the line dog food and make sure that these guys are eating properly and not overeating. Meal prep goes to say that you need to not free feed Rottweilers. These guys are not going to stop eating and that's the horror story that you hear about with the 180 pound Rottweiler. He's not healthy, he's overweight because somebody's irresponsible on feeding him the proper amount of food at the proper times of day and night. The next thing that I have is going to be a tip from Kenai here that you need to prepare for drool. Kenai drools on everything as well as Fluffy. Rottweilers and big dogs are prone to drooling. You're gonna take it with you to work. You're gonna take it with you everywhere. So make sure that you're ready for that. Make sure that you're prepared to clean off drool from you before you walk out of the house. They're gonna come up, put their head in your lap, and they're gonna drool all over your brand new shorts. Or they're gonna lay their head on your shoe and drool all over that brand new shoe that you just bought. So be ready to get drooled on and be ready to clean up after it because it's gonna happen. Alrighty guys, the next puppy pro tip that I have for you is make sure that you're getting the proper toys for your pets. So right here we have what's considered a chew toy. Now this is something that they'll use when they're teething and their teeth really hurt because they're growing and they want to bite down on something to relieve some of that pressure. Chew toys are definitely necessary for puppies. Then you have training toys, things that grab their attention, things that make sounds, squeakers, uh, things like that. You And you want to make sure to keep these off the ground if you're not using them or directly rewarding the dogs with them because if you leave them on the ground with other stuff, they're gonna chew on these and chew on that and think it's fine. If you leave just these on the ground while they're playing with them and then you pick them up when they're done, your dog will start to look for them when they're teething and you can grab the bone and set it down and they understand that there's certain times that they are allowed to play with toys, but that really helps in training when when you wanna get their attention. So if this toy is laying on the ground all day and you come home and you try and get their attention with this toy that they've been playing with all day, it's not gonna work out as easy. If this toy's been gone all day, they've thought about it a few times, they want it, you pull it out, they really want it, they're gonna be willing to listen and do those tricks or whatever you're doing with them so that you can get their attention. 
So if this toy's been sitting out on the ground for eight hours in the day and you haven't really picked it up and the dog's been playing with it, when you go to grab this toy and get the dog's attention, he's not always gonna be intrigued by it because you left it out all day and he might have already had his fix of the toy for the day and he might be burnt down on it looking for something new. So if you put the toys up or if you set them out of sight, then you will have a better chance of getting their attention when you pull the toys out and wanna do a training session or an obedience session. The next type of toy that you're gonna wanna consider is one of these softer teething toys. This one has some spiked grooves on it, and what this is gonna do is it's gonna help clean your puppy's teeth when they chew down on it, but it's also gonna help their gums, and it's gonna help clean some of that tartar that's gonna start to build right on their teeth and their gum line. So you're definitely gonna wanna consider having some softer chew toys as well, but these hard Nyla bones are a great option as well. Alrighty guys, so with that tip being said, we're gonna talk about the next tip, which is prioritizing training. If you don't have 10 or 15 minutes to train your dog a day, then do it for 25 or 30. You're gonna wanna make sure that these guys get the training and leadership from you that they need to be a well-behaved and respected Rottweiler bred dog. You don't wanna be the person on the block who everyone says, oh, their Rottweilers chase my kids down the street all the time. They're always out, they're always biting kids, they're hurting other dogs. You want your dog to be known as the dog that when it got out, it was laying on the sidewalk, playing with the kids, rolling around and messing with other dogs. Like, you don't want the horror story of a dog that ends up killing a kid or other animals. You want to make sure that you guys have a properly behaved, socialized, and well-mannered dog. Alrighty, so after talking about training, I wanna talk about a whole subject that I brought up a little earlier in the video, but we need to touch base on it just again because this breed is so important that we do this. Socialize early and socialize often. These guys need to get out and see goats, chickens, they need to see cats, they need to see people, they need to see kids, they need to see fires, they need to see water, they need to see waterfalls, they need to, they need to see everything. If you don't, your dog is gonna be afraid of other animals. Your dog's gonna be afraid of other people. Your dog's gonna be afraid of leaving the house. Your dog is gonna get anxiety if you leave. Your dog is gonna not be well-mannered and not well-rounded. So make sure that you're doing your due diligence to the breed by making sure that they get out and socialize properly, they're trained properly, they are meeting other people, kids, and they're, they're good around everything. Uh, if you don't ever introduce your Rottweiler to a cat, don't expect that they're gonna be good with them. Their nature is going to be to chase them down because in their mind it looks like a toy, like a, a furry little thing that walks on the ground and moves and has a little tail that goes like this. It looks to them like a toy. And then once they get to it, if they go to bite it, then they're gonna maybe break its neck or even, or, or even kill it. And they're gonna bite down on it, hurt it, or even worse, kill it. And if they do that, then you're responsible for that. So make sure that your dogs are getting socialized with cats so that that situation is never you. Alrighty guys, so the next tip that I have is please remember to be patient and calm, but you also need to be firm with these guys. You need to be patient and calm. They're gonna have accidents. They're gonna bite things. They're gonna ruin things. They're gonna have all sorts of things happen. They're, they're gonna spill their water bowl, they're gonna throw up in your living room and you're gonna have to clean it up. Just understand that they would do anything for you, so you need to be calm and patient with them and help them get through it. You need to be there for them, don't yell at them. Um, be firm with them though, let them know. If they're biting you, you know, you know. You tell them, that is not okay with me. I'm setting that boundary that you do not bite me. And it's gonna take time understand that puppies can bite for months what's important is that you continue the training and you keep that calm and constant leadership because they will grow out of it I promise you that remember that these guys are 100% oh my gosh you are the cutest thing ever you are the cutest thing ever just remember that these guys are 100% out to please you as an owner. That's what the breed is known for and that's why we love them so much. They wanna do a good job for you, so make sure that you're setting them up for success by being a calm, constant leader. 
Alrighty guys, for those of you who have stuck around this long, I have a bonus tip, which is gonna be, you are responsible for what this animal turns out to be. If you have a well-respected, well-mannered Rottweiler, that's gonna be credit to you. If you have a Rottweiler that's running amok and killing all the other animals in the neighborhood or hurting other people or not properly socialized or barks at everyone or growls at everyone or is food aggressive, that's gonna be on you. So you need to understand that you are 100% responsible for what this animal turns out to be. Thank you guys for watching another video brought to you by me, Colin Bracken, here on the Roddy channel. If you guys enjoyed today's video or you got some knowledge out of it, be sure to smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on that bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos to help you and your furry friends. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Peace out.